All right, we're gonna move this over there for the minute. Let's see any questions as people are coming in. What's going on, Michael? Glad you can be here. It's three fifty-seven. We're gonna get this thing started in just a second. Uh, these are the rules. These are how I do my webinars. Once I turn on the keynote presentation, and I'm just going to go through the webinar. And if there's something that I say, roll tide, Cheryl, anything that I say you hear that you have a question, just go ahead right here in this. Ah, well, you can't. Okay. Right here in this area and just ask your question. And when I come out of the webinar, I'll answer your question. And that's when we'll have the live Q&A session. Uh, just for once again, if you're new, I use profanity. I say crazy stuff, and uh, once again, this will be highly, highly unorthodox. And let's come out of there. Let's come out of there because we're going to go back there in a minute. And uh, 358, we are about to let it rip. Welcome to day two of 30 days to 2500 bucks. If you were here yesterday, it was hot, and today we're going to make it hotter. So, Let's talk about something that a lot of folks don't want to talk about. Commitment. Every woman wants to talk about it, especially if she's got that good guy, especially one with a permanent suntan, wants to make sure that he's committed to her. And you know what? She's actually on point. If you're going to be romantically, fiscally, whatever, involved with someone or a project or a thing, you need to be committed. So I want you to uh, pledge. Yeah, I need your word. I want you to pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. I want you to really take that seriously because commitment is more powerful than talent. It is more powerful than, I mean, it, it, it will get you far. Commitment will get you very, very far. And uh, just day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. As I got right there, I all in. As uh, crazy as that looks, I'm going to leave it. But seriously, you want to be committed, really, really committed, because this uh, webinar, serious webinar is going to test you and try you in ways that you've never, ever experienced before. All right. Yesterday was day one. Part of the task of day one was to sell some stuff. And uh, there was I'm going to shout out to Karen because Karen actually sold some stuff last night and like a true hustler, someone else said, hey, I need some more soap. And that's like, OK, I got you. So Karen made some sales last night. That was one person that I can ver verify because I saw it with my own two eyes. And that's that's what we do. Hustling is not incorporating. Hustling is not business cards. Hustling is not an office space or a warehouse or a truck or a truck with your low. That's that's not hustling. Those are the accoutrements of hustling. Hustling at its core is selling. Sell, baby, sell. You want to be like that cigarette smoking dude selling some stuff frequently as possible. Now, for those of you who sold something and please put in, you know, I'll, when I get to the questions, I'll answer that. How would you feel? When you made that first sale, for some of you, that may have just been old hat. For some of you, it may have been the first sale you ever made. How did it feel? Where did it take you? Did, it, did you get like that warm and fuzzy in your little belly? I'll tell you my first big sale. I've had a lot of sales in my life. Uh, it started off in elementary school when it was like we had those quote unquote fundraisers and you were selling peanut butter brittle or or Rolades or Crackle or all kinds of stuff. I felt good doing that. But as I became older and I had that first really big, 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 big sale, I felt like I was born again. I know that sounds very hokey and a little bit over the top, but it was my first commercial contract sale. It was just, um, I got a check for 15 grand for about six weeks of work. I was on cloud 22, forget cloud nine. I was on cloud 22. So when you make that first sale, that first thing that says, I can actually create something that someone will buy from me or be part of that, it's a really, really good feeling. Also, please put in the questions, how long did it take? Karen, I think it took her about 40 minutes after the webinar was over to make that first sale, if that. So Karen, 
once again hats off to you congratulations i know there was other people that made sales but that is what we do we sell stuff when i worked at rent crate uh michael shanley he was in a uh, karen i cannot remember her last name but they were married they had different last names Shanley said, Rental Credit is a sales based organization. If you're not a salesperson, you don't need to fucking be here. He said that in a sales meeting. Everyone was in sales. When you are a chick and you put on that lip gloss that looks really good, and when you go out in the street and women and guys are saying, wow, that looks good on you, you're selling. You don't think you're selling. You're just like, I put on some stuff to make myself look better. That's marketing. That's marketing. Guys, when you get that haircut, when you put, like, okay, this is common. Like, most of you have never seen me in a tie or a shirt. And every time I do it, <laughs> and someone who sees me, it's always, wow, you really look nice. Like, I look like shit before. You know, it's just crazy. But when I, whenever I'm going to do something, and if I got to go to court, or I'm going for a loan or something, the dress pants, the suit, the t that looks coming out because it gets me so much further than the hoodie and the t-shirt look. It does. It's just how we are. And it's just understanding your environment. That's how things go. But essentially, we're all salespeople and it's a great thing. So for those of you who uh, took part of the challenge just today, Congratulations. You are now on the beginning of being a freaking hustler because that's what it is. That's it. With this guy in the jacket, that's it. That's the core of what we do. All this other stuff is to support that. That's number one. And with that, <laughs> we're going to jump into the pool, baby, because this is day two. I have a saying. I'd rather ask for forgiveness than ask for permission, and it's something I live my life on. It's gotten me in trouble here and there, but it works most of the time, and I continue to go with it. If you're in this webinar, you're about to jump into a pool, and it's going to be a very, very different pool. A lot of things that you haven't really thought about before, because this is what I want you to think about. And I'm really, really serious here. I'd rather live well once than to half live a thousand times. If you are not living in the house that you want, and this isn't a material thing. If you're not driving the car you want, and you're not married to the person you want to be married to, you are not doing the occupation that you want to. If you are a woman and you want to have kids, you don't have kids. If you're a man, you want to be married, but you punked out and went through, I ain't getting married. You are living half a life. Because you're not living a life of design and intent. Because you've let other people decide what's good for you. Now, a big part of the 30 day to 2,500 bucks is courage. And that's, you see the little girl up there, you know, she doesn't look scared. She looks like I'm getting paid because, you know, this is was a photo deal because it's too cute. And I got this from my stock photo. But she's like, I'm getting paid. She's not scared. You jump into the pool of being a hustler. Jump into the pool of being an entrepreneur because once you get, I, sh I should back it up a step. Be careful what you ask for. You may get it. Once you get into this, it's going to be very hard to get out. Once you get a taste that, mm, you get, ooh, that was good. It's going to be very hard. I feel that I am totally 100% unfit to work for anyone else. I am unsuitable to be employed in any corporation other than my own. I'm a, I, it just, they would fire me the first day. And it's because I've been living this life for 14 years. Uh, some years were really rough. Some years were really great. But I would rather do this. And if you have a job now and you, you're looking at doing this, understand it's a matriculation. It's a process. And it's a bunch of baby steps that add up to a big journey. Because, like, you can take this course. You don't have to quit your job. I actually encourage you to keep your job um, until your income level gets to a certain level. I've never. You can go talk to a million people who watch my videos. I've never encouraged anyone to just quit their job without a plan. I don't recommend it. You have a job. You have something that's really beneficial. You can get your business income to knock out your federal taxes on your job income. 
I mean, really, the best couple is a man or a woman, man and man, woman, woman, whatever, that one has a job and one has a business, and they can go ahead and work together and totally obliterate the federal taxes, bringing their tax rate down effectively to 18 to 20% versus 38 to 40. That's a win. So get ready to jump into the pool. If you ever watched The Wonderful Wizards of Oz, you know, I didn't know it, but the first time I saw it, I thought the cowardly lion was a scared little bitch. Because it was just, I just didn't like him. I didn't, I didn't like him. I didn't like, I didn't like him. I didn't freaking like him. And you know the reason I didn't like him? Because I was like the cowardly lion. I was a kid. But I was full of fear. I didn't have any courage. I think part of my speech impediment was mostly nerves and fears because I would go up to people and blah, 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 blah. And I, I used to speak like that. I'm not making fun of anyone. I'm speaking, talking about myself. I spent six years in special education and speech pathology. So it was, you know, people thought I was stuck up or something. I was just painfully shy because my lips would not work. My brain would say the and my lips would go bloop. <laughs> they were just like, we're not cooperating, man. We're, we're not cooperating. So with this deal of being different, being better, increasing your business, it's going to take a certain level of courage. You know, because my favorite saying, don't be a scared little bitch. You can be scared and that's normal. That's a normal part of life. That's very normal. What would make you exceptional if you learn to move forward in spite of your fears? When I got in the storage auction business, my contract office furniture business was in a state of flux. It's like one month, wow, you know, we're making money. Next month, shit, we owe a lot of money. It was just a roller coaster of uncertainty. And I was just like, I need something a little bit more solid. And I know you're going, storage auctions? <laughs> but really, they were. They were really solid and it wasn't so much because of the storage auctions. It was my business knowledge. And that's what I'm trying to give you here. When you get this knowledge and this financial education, you can take that and make it applicable to many different things. The lessons I learned from starting those first five businesses enabled business six through 10 to be successful. So knowledge, getting your licks, buying your education is a wonderful way to protect yourself from the future i know it sounds crazy because you know a lot of people i get these questions like hey are you buying gold are you buying silver are you prepping do you have bullets and ammo and all this other stuff okay if we get to the point where gold is three five six seven eight nine thousand dollars an ounce we have larger problems in the world we have famine we have disease we have a lot of problems i mean just me you're better off having a room full of guns and ammo and some food than gold or silver. But that's just my opinion. But I'm getting off topic and let's getting back to it. Bam! That's right. This course is full of tasks and things. And this is going to sound a little crazy. I want you, yes, you, today at some point to find a stranger and get a hug. And it can be real simple. I've done it. You can go like, excuse me. Um, and I'm going to give you I'm going to give you the pitch. I'm going to give you the pitch. Excuse me. I am taking this business course and the guy is nuts, but he wants us to come out and engage with people we don't know. So part of the task is, if you don't mind, if you don't want to do it, I'm not going to shoot you. I'm going to walk away because you got to be real cool with this is uh, can I get a hug and just hold your arms out? Either they're going to hug you or walk away. I was going to do, uh, you know, get a kiss from a stranger, but I don't want any of you up on sexual charges or anything because I know some of you are some horny dudes and you would be fully taking advantage of the situation. It wasn't me. It was Glendon. And no, that is a banana in my leg, in my pocket. So, no. But seriously, go find a stranger, someone you never, ever met. Doesn't care. Man, woman, whatever. Get a hug today. Yes, today. And I know you're going, what the hell does this have to do with hustling? It has everything to do with hustling. Everything that you are, everything that you will be, you will get through and from other people. And as soon as you get comfortable going up to strangers and asking them for things, the more successful your business will be. 
I know you're going, what? If you watch my YouTube videos, you know that you know I'm a horn dog and I like the ladies. I love the ladies. Yes, I do. I love the ladies. And I'm very good at dating. And one of the reasons is I got through that painful period of, excuse me, uh, would you, you, you like, 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 like to go out with me? You know, that bullshit. Most guys are wimps. That's why they like when the girl's like, yeah, I like you. They're like, yes, because, you know, they're punks. And when you go through the rejection process and get to the point where rejection doesn't hurt you and doesn't destroy you and you just, you know, brush your shoulder off, you become way more successful because you keep going. Dating and selling is so closely related that many of the things, there's the pitch, there's the presentation, there's the clothes, all that stuff is related. And when I became really good at dating, I became really good at sales at the same time. This didn't happen in a vacuum. So learning to go out to people you don't know and say, hey, my name is Charles the Chinchilla and I got a pitch for you and just put your stuff out there. Put your stuff. I'm going to say dudes for my dudes that are listening to this. There are women that you think are super hot that you don't think will go out with you. If you had the courage to walk up to them in a calm and confident manner and ask them out, they would. I'm telling you, they would. Women, same deal. Because what did I just say? A lot of dudes are punk. Girl walks up and, you know, for a lot of guys, as long as she's got breast and breathing, that's enough. Ooh, yeah, man, this girl asked me out, man. Seriously, learn to step up and ask for what you want with expectancy. And you'll be amazed at how often you get it. Bam! Yes, yes. If you weren't here yesterday, this happened. This bull is going to represent me dropping some on you. It's just boom. All right. What I want you to do, and if you don't have pen and paper, you can use your computer. But I should have announced that you need pen and paper. I want you to write down 20 business ideas. Don't overthink it. Don't get too just bam. If it's like washing tennis balls, write it down. So you got six minutes, go. Yes, go. And uh, I'll provide a little Jeopardy music while you're writing this stuff down. And I'm going to hit my uh, timer, make sure that I'm keeping up with this. All right, so I've got this at this time. So once we're up, I'll leave the Jeopardy music. Dun, 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 dun. No, I'm not going to do that to you. That would drive me crazy. But seriously. Write down your goals, think about it, and this is a free-flowing exercise, a free-form exercise. Typically, many people, and I get this from my consulting business all of the time, man, I got this ideal. It's the best ideal ever, ever. I can't tell nobody. If I tell you, I have to kill you. Or, you know, I'm going to have to make you sign the confidentiality agreement. Um just last week, I met a dude, he had this idea, he was a trucker, and he had this thing, and he's like, I can't tell you, and it was the best idea, and I asked him this simple question, how long have you had that idea? Six years. And I was like, I'm going to tell you something else, you don't want to hear this. Just like you figured that out, someone else is having that same idea, and they're probably going to beat you to market. He didn't want to hear that, because you think your ideal is unique and super, super special. I'm a writer. Everything has been told before. It's just been told differently. You may have like, you know, a truly new innovative invention was the Asian dude that created touch screens. Because I remember reading about it years ago in Inc. And it was just like, they, they're just, I mean, they were just like the possibilities of this. If it wasn't for that dude, you wouldn't have an iPad. You wouldn't have your iPhone. You would have none of these touch screen devices. He created that technology by being able to focus light anywhere on the screen and get it to react a certain way was really, you know, my nerd, my, my nerd, my nerd thing. I had like a nerd crush. I was like, Ooh, but don't get caught up in this idea is the best idea. Cause what happens is you hold on to it. And what happens when you put a blockage in the process, you get stopped up and your ideal stop coming. That ideal that you think may be the greatest thing since, um, you know, Vikings and selling the seas or Germans making Mercedes Benzes, it may not be. That ideal that's five, six, seven, eight, or a hundred ideals deep may be the thing that makes you a billionaire or liberates you from the life you have. But you have to get them out. Uh, I'm a writer. 
I come up with stories all the time and I'll tell you how I do it. I get up first thing in the morning and I just create just like, bam, whatever. Uh, another thing you can do when you leave this exercise, if you have an iPhone or an Android, you've got what's called a uh, microphone, uh, a recorder on it. Just put that app, make sure it's one on your first desktop. And whenever you have an idea, just hit open the app. Hey, you know, uh, I'm going to start a shaving chinchilla ranch. Send it to yourself in your email. So when it gets to your email box, bam, there it is. And you don't really have to retain it. And another idea has come because I've had a lot of ideas before. And I will also tell you, a lot of your ideas are going to suck. You're going to have to euthanize them. You're going to have to kill the baby. That's right. You're going to have to kill the baby and then move on. But the more ideas you have, the more that you come up with, the better off that you're going to be. So definitely, definitely, definitely think of these ideas because there's two things. We're already up to two tasks today. And see where this is going? This is an action-oriented webinar. I don't want you to come here and listen to me just talk and talk and talk for X amount of minutes. I want you to come here, listen to me talk, take this information, and do something with it. Because if you don't do anything with it, you wasted your time. I got people that's going to do stuff with it, so I ain't waste my time. Because Karen, I said, you know, I got Karen gets the gold star today. Um there are people who are going to take this information and they're going to run with it. They're just going to run with it. So we're almost at that six minute mark. So if you've got, and understand, you may not get 20 ideas. The goal is to try to crank up that gray matter, to get it really going. Because the thing is, it only takes one idea for you to be like set for life. Think about that. Now, the other part of the ideal thing is going back to what I was saying before was everyone thinks my ideal is special. My ideal is so cute. Look at my little idea. Look at all the hair on my ideal. Ideals is easy. Once you get the ideal factory going, you will have more ideals than you can execute. And then you have to create a process of elimination. Like, well, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this and so on and so forth. But What's more important than the ideal is the execution. Execution is what matters. And let's break down execution. Execution is just getting started and um, going for it. There's getting started and going for it. There's consistent execution. And there's the perfection of your execution. If you learn to execute, you will make mistakes. My first book, I executed, I wrote it down, I put it out there, and people were like, oh, God, it's horrible. Oh, I'm going to buy that shit. And I kept executing. It got better and better and better. So understand, once you come up with the idea, execution, 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 that's the deal. Because if your execution is on point, your competition can know your plans and still cannot stop you. How many times have you heard me say on YouTube, I'm coming up with a product, you need to get in now or the price is going up? For many long time people, it's like all the time. And I've done it again and again and again. And there's some, some noise about like, you know, there's other people who are getting into the information marketing arena so far as resales. If you notice, I haven't really talked about resale. This is business advice for anyone in any business. I am like giving you stuff that will help. If you have a tire shop, this will help your tire shop. If you have a, a candy apple shop, this will help your candy apple shop. Because one thing I learned in the storage auction business is you have to be very, very flexible. And long as you your, your business principles are firmly rooted, like, you know, we stand for this and you can kind of bend a little this way, bend a little that way. You can be really, really good to go in terms of making a lot of money. But understand execution is it. OK, for those of you who sold something, if you don't have a name for your business, you're going to name your business today. Do not get overly complicated because this is another hang up I've, I've seen in my consulting practice. Well, you know, this name, that name, that. No, get started. You can change the name later. When Walmart came out to be, people were going, Ooh, Walmart. Walmart used to be a dirty word. I'm going to Walmart. Ooh, that's so profane. Seriously, now it's like Walmart. People are like, yeah, because, you know, all the Walmart, you know, airs. And it used to be a dirty name. So don't even worry about the name unless 
you're in entertainment or something like that, don't even worry about it. Because your name can be Boo Boo the Fool Incorporated, but if Boo Boo the Fool Incorporated provides great service, great products, people will buy. Now, you couldn't call yourself uh, Charles Manson Incorporated. That may create some problems. But as long as your name is sane and simple and you know, for your URL, you may need to have in there what you do and you may not. It really depends on your, your marketing. But for those of you who done, didn't have a business, sold some stuff yesterday, name your business. Like I said, you can change it later. Don't get overly twisted with it. Okay, for those of you who sold some stuff yesterday, once again, congratulations. Glad for you. Glad to know you. Glad that you are here. Now, wash, rinse, and repeat. That's right. Yeah, yesterday was just the beginning. If you're a member of this course and you have products and you have services, your goal every day that you come here is to sell something. So, once again, hit your Facebook page, hit your, your YouTube channel, and just like, once again, I give you the pitch. I'm taking this business course, and one of the tasks is that I need to sell something every day. So, if you don't have a need for my product or service, do you know of someone? And would you please pass my name to them? And would you please forward their contact information to me if you can do that? If not, would you please ask for permission to forward my... I know, I'm like, you know, it's like, good, 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 good Lord, Glendon, that's a lot of asking. That's what it takes to be the boss. It costs to be the boss. You have to ask. You have to say, I want your business. And when you get their business, you get their money. So wash rinse repeat so go ahead keep selling that was just like and there's gonna be other challenges too so we're up to you know three things the hug the ideals and selling and the reason i'm piling it on like that if you run a business you're going to be doing a multitude of things if it's just you you're going to be doing everything and you're going to have to get good at it until you can hire help all right now i'm going to pop out of here for a minute because I know that sometimes people have issues with trying to find ideas. Now, this is a cheat. This is a hack if you want to. If so, you know, this is a hack. Now, you can use TaskRabbit. Now, TaskRabbit is only in certain zip codes. It's not everywhere. But don't worry about that. You can go to TaskRabbit and look. Drop off goods to sick employees. That can be a business. That's a delivery business. You could like have this stuff delivered somewhere, come out of here, and bam. I'm just gonna go through a few. I'm not gonna go through this, but you can come to Task Rabbit and look at the things that people are asking for and look at the services that people are offering and use that as a template for to build your business or to add to your business. And let's let's talk about, you know, let's look. I mean, this right here is you put a, you run a Craigslist ad that I will assemble your IKEA crap. You might be working every day because you know IKEA is all those parts and pieces. Look at the number of people who are doing installs. I mean, you know, if Task Rabbit is in your neighborhood, you can use this to peddle your services. So, all right. Now that we are done with that, like I said, um, that's right, I did start a little early, just a little bit early. But now I'm going to open up the floor to questions because, once again, I'm not keeping everybody here because this is every day. So it's not going to be like an hour and a half. No, that's too much. So we're roughly at the close to the 30 minute mark. And the questions always take up a lot of time. So I'm about to roll over here. What's up? What's up? What's up, Cheryl? Let's see. Richard loves it. Five years. Okay, here's the Wayne. I'm gonna read some of these comments. Ha ha, I get it. Push aside the shot introverted crap and don't take no as a personal thing. But I'm not hugging the insurance guy. Come on, man. You can hug the insurance guy. Well, insurance guys need love too. Uh this is from I believe it's Monia Jackson. Can we include ones from yesterday? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am the school teacher and I'm that evil school teacher. Nope, gotta be new ones. Hey, what's up, uh, Rick and Prophet? He's in the house. 
Uh, the way it's like Ikea Assembly, I love it. Can absolutely do that. Oh, five years of speech therapy? Yeah, it was no joke. <laughs> Seriously, he's coming here as a cold call today. Someone will get shot. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is funny. Okay. What's up, Kevin? I'm a young hustler from Lone Beach, California. Cool. Can we sell a hug? This is from Richard Cannon. Actually, for those who missed yesterday's, there was a section about this woman that was doing cuddling as a business, and that's how she got the idea. That's why I was talking about coming over here to Tash Rabbit, because you can see something that will generate an idea for you. She saw these guys. There was two. One guy was giving hugs away for free. Then this other guy was like, oh, hell no, I can do better. So he goes up, and his sign says, hugs $2. Guess who did better? The guy who was asking for two dollars made more did better than the guy who was giving away the hugs for free. Because we as people attach value to things that people charge for. Yes, a hug. So yeah, you can sell a hug. Wow, I could not say my name until the fourth grade. That's deep. All right, hey Glendon is uh, I believe Adi from the UK in Japan. That's right. We have a lot of international people here. What do you want us to do with the list? Great question. I got an answer for you. You create the list, and um, that's going to be part of some future days, but I'll give you a heads up. You go through the list, and you start to quantify what you really can do. Because the thing is, a lot of times you're stuck. You're just like, what do I do? You know, I'll give you an example, and he's here, and uh, he's probably going to chime up. It's when you are so used to you you know i'm gonna give you a perfect example i'm gonna give you a perfect example and it's, it's gonna take a minute but i'm gonna give you a perfect example when i was in the army we went to uh seoul we went to korea for team spirit i was in the medical unit and in being in the medical unit we had a lot of females but i was stationed in hawaii so we go to romeo 301 and these guys from across the dmz they're coming down because you know they're coming down for vacation and they see these girls in my unit, and they're just like, oh, Jackie, you're so beautiful. I mean, and we're like, these are pound puppies. These are pound puppies. And then after, you know, being in Korea for about six weeks, and I saw Jackie come by, and I said, oh, gosh, she is gorgeous. It's like sometimes you don't really see what you have as being valuable because you see it all the time. But when you are removed from it or you have to really look at it from a different perspective, you go, like, oh, so what I'm saying is, I want you to look at those ideas, don't discount them, and come up with a process on how to actually turn one into, just pick one, because that was the task yesterday. Pick an idea and run with it and try to get paid. So what you're going to do is take your list, pick an idea, create a product or service, and you're going to try to sell that to someone today, because that's called validation. There's no more greater validation than someone pulling out their credit card or whole hard cash to give it to you for what you have to offer. And uh, that's what you're going to do with it. Uh, Edward Harvard. You always so slick, man. Can you hug someone you know who you never touch? No, it has to be a stranger. Because you already have a certain degree of familiarity with the person you know. Hey, Steve. Uh, thanks for your videos, Glendon. I released my first ebook less than a week ago, and I've been killing it. Congratulations, Prof. Freaking Profit. And Karen is here. She's slinging her soap on Facebook. Yeah, I saw that. I thought that was awesome. You're welcome. Because that's what, that's what this is about. Actually getting started and doing something with your stuff. Because it seems like a simple thing. But you don't know when... All right, let, let's just take Karen. Because Karen gets the gold star for the day. When Karen did that, and she, her goal was to just sell one, she actually got two sales because she introduced herself and said, you know, I'm part of this business course, and I have to do this. She actually got two sales by just putting it out there. Now, can you imagine as we get deeper in this course and we start talking about quants? Uh, okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. As we start talking about quants and marketing, because you can build on that, because I'll give you a quick deal with my friend with the cookie business because I sat down with her and uh, I gave her the information I'm giving you and in six months she went from nothing to 
a solid thousand dollars profit above and beyond all expenses selling her cookies. And yesterday she made three deliveries. This time next year, her cookie business is going to be doing 30 to 40 G's a year minimum. Now, that's why she still has a job. That's profit. 30 to 40,000 profit selling cookies. So it her thing is, and she had this idea for five years. And I'm like, Sharon, do the cookies. Sharon, do the cookies. Sharon, do the cookies. <laughs> do those, sling those cookies, girl. And, you know, when she finally did it, it was like, oh. So that's why there's so much in here of getting started. Go out and do it because you will surprise yourself. Uh, this is Sherry. Can we view yesterday's recording? I will address that at the end. All right. This is Eddie Moore. Working more than one ideal at a time. Can it hurt your process? Yes. That's why I said take one ideal and validate it. Take one. You, you're absolutely right, Eddie. If you're trying to do like three or four, but take one. Now, this is the thing. Um, you missed yesterday. There's going to be, you're going to have four businesses going. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Because the goal is, you know, 2,500 per month, right? Well, once you validate your ideas and you get some scale, you can do 2,500 a week. You know, we're going to get there because that's, that's the, like the secret sauce. I didn't tell anybody because Sharon is grossing because she's got expenses. She's doing about 2,000 a month, but she's got help. She's got uh, booth rent and other things that eat into her profit because if she was managed to do it all out of her house, but she got into this farmer's market. And yeah, so she, I actually, no, I think she's, nope, she's at around 50. She's good looking, she's trending for 1500 this month with all her expenses because her business is growing. So definitely um, break off one item and go forward with it. Uh, Raymond Berger, just curious how many people are watching right now. That's a curious, why are you all up in my business, man? <laughs> uh, we're at the limit uh, on my plan. That's where we are. I didn't think I would have to bump it up, but I might have to. Uh, it's quite a few. Everybody's trying to look under my skirt. I'm feeling some kind of way about that. Let's see. Okay, here's Eddie Moore. Uh, let's introduce Eddie Moore to the world. Announcing Eddie Moore to the Hustlers University 30 day program. Uh, Eddie has a pressure washing uh, business. He hits me up on Facebook quite a bit. And he's talking about doing the pressure washing and the barbecue thing. Okay, let's really talk about that. You've got two businesses, but when do you sell barbecue? You sell barbecue at lunchtime. You sell barbecue in the evenings. You can sell barbecue on the weekends. You could do pressure washing Monday through Friday if you so desire and sell barbecue on the weekends. Or you can do pressure washing in the morning and sell barbecue in the evenings. See, the thing that you're missing is you can set your schedule. Once you get your marketing together, you can book appointments for your schedule. When you are new and you're trying to get business, you just take any money. It's like, hey, you know, can you come pressure wash my wife at 10 p.m.? Wink, wink. And you, because you thirsty, you going to do it. And you wonder what the wife looks like. Pressure wash. But essentially, as an entrepreneur, you can command your schedule. You have a lot of power with that. Like, okay, let's talk about why I'm doing these webinars between 4 and 5. I have done a few hundred webinars at 9 p.m. I'm an early riser. I get up 4.30, 5 o'clock. Doing webinars that late makes an incredibly long day. And I was like, you know what? Let me change it up. I've always been doing them in the evenings for years and years. And I was like, I'm going to do them in the day. Because you know why? I attend webinars during the day all the time. And there's always a bunch of people there. So I made that decision that I'm telling you. So you can sit down and just like, hey, um, how am I going to do both of these? And just work out a schedule. And also, one may be better than the other one. I'm new. What's up, Glendon? Thank you for your time. This is John Yannick. Cool. Welcome to the group, John. Uh, barbecue is a summer event. Hell no. No. Barbecue is year round. I'm in the South, man. We eat that stuff 365. Some people have a barbecue for Christmas. What are you talking about? Let's see. This is Chris Banyan. You're coming up with your channels. What would be the next step if one wants to be part of the G-verse? All right, let's talk about that. Uh, I actually talked a little bit about that yesterday. 
I am moving away from the YouTube channels because there were some ganks in there that didn't really suit me well. Uh, number one, I have a lot of international people and none of my international people could sign up. That was a problem. Number two, it was um, some issues with maxing up channels. I still think it's a great idea, but I'm going to do something totally different with it. If you want to be part of Hustler University or the Hustler Mindset Project, that's it. That's the only thing that I have going on right now because I pulled away from the channels because it was just getting to be too much. And I'll revisit that, but yeah. And uh, I'll talk about that at the end once we get past some questions. Because like I said, since this is happening every day, I'm not trying to keep you here for hours and hours because you are hustlers. You have people to see, products to sell, and families and strangers to hug on. Ed Harvey. <laughs> All right. This is from Leslie. Uh, so wait a minute. Leslie Ann. Sorry. Glendon, how do you determine pricing? I cook medibles for friends, but I'm not figured out what to charge. They provide everything. I just show up and cook. So far, I've only gotten gas money. Medibles are legal. Okay, I'm ignorant. What are medicals and possibly big business? What would you start to determine the pricing point? Okay, this is how you determine pricing. Even though I don't know what medibles are, I can still tell you how to determine pricing. You have to put a price on your time say all right uh, i had a personal chef at one point and they were like 60 bucks per event and for extended events like 120 bucks she yeah she wouldn't roll up to the house for less than 60 dollars, but she brought everything too i would say start this like for the people that you're doing the cooking for like it's 25 bucks an hour if they provide everything, because you, you still got to drive over there and also make sure that you're keeping up with your mileage because that will help you offset your taxes like you wouldn't believe. So start off with 25 bucks an hour, two hour minimum, because you think you got to cook, you got to prep. You got I mean, yeah, start with 25 bucks an hour, two hour minimum. And if your demand stays consistent, you can raise it up. If not, if your demand just like plummets, okay, then that price is too high. Now, another thing about pricing, wherever you are, you might be able to get $25, but someone in New York who's doing the same exact thing may get 100 bucks for the same hours. So that's something else you have to take in consideration. Who's your target? Who's your customer base? Are you trying to serve, you know, overstressed, high paid attorneys? Are you, are you like delivering meals? There's a lot more to that question. Oh, gotcha. I'm slow. <laughs> Pot, edibles, cooking Mary Jane. Uh, yeah, I see why they provide everything because that could get real complicated. All right, this is from Leon. I heard you mention several times that you had five failed businesses before one really took off. At what point in the failure of the business did you decide it was time to move on to the next thing? Uh, number one, I'll, I'll tell you a sad story. I had this idea that was so far ahead of its time. It was like, a, you know, pictures with your pooch. I was going to, I went out to Wolf Camera, bought this expensive ass 35 millimeter camera, like 1600 bucks, got a credit card for it and put up an ad up in the HAC, which cost me $200 and waited for the phone calls to come in and they never came in. That business ended after about six weeks and I lost about three grand. It was not validated. Didn't know, you know, it was a great idea, but it was decades ahead of its time. You know, I actually forecasted this thing. But to answer your question directly, you, the second one I stopped because I was making money, but it was taking me too much time. The third business I stopped because, oh Lord, I had a crazy run in with someone and I actually didn't know how to sell. My stopping points came when I sat down with myself and said, this isn't working. And these businesses didn't have reiterations that, you know, they didn't have pivot points. They was just like, I set them up that, hey, I can do just this. And when it didn't work, I had to move on to something else. But essentially, I lost money, wasn't making any money, was making money, didn't have any time. It was... When I just went as far as I could, I just stopped because I didn't have the information I have now that I'm giving you. 
if I could do that over again, I would have went out and taken a survey before I bought any equipment. And I would have found out that business wasn't going to work anyway in that time frame. Sure. You're welcome. To Uh, this is from Aid. Have you read Breaking the Time Barrier? No, I have not. Have to check it out. Oh, no medical patients. Got gotcha. you. What's up, Dom? Someone's saying, this is Eddie saying, you can also sell to weed dispensaries. They're small business people. I'll tell y'all, when um, weed comes to Georgia, I'm probably going to have a shop. I am probably going to have a shop because in the next five to ten years, I'm probably 40, 40 states are going to legalize weed. And I need to get on that because it's going to be like a liquor stop. <laughs> I'm going to have one. I'm going to be one of those people. All right. This is a question from Richard. How did you find someone great to outsource all of your eBay listings for you? This is what I did. When I used to love eBay, I used to track a lot of other sellers. And I used to track local sellers to see how I was doing in comparison to those people. So I knew people who can do it. And when I just got totally frustrated with eBay, I went up to five, six people and made them this pitch. I was like, I'll bring you more stuff than you can list if you take 20%. One guy was like, no. Actually, most of them said no. Then one woman that said no, she got in a jam. She called me back. And I took a 17-foot truck full of stuff for eBay and dumped it in her garage. It took her a month and a half to list it all. And just, you know, she didn't even sell everything. And she made eight grand with her 20%. I just created my own Amazon fulfillment. I didn't know what I, what I was doing because that's how we was like selling like 6,000 items a month. It, it was just, that was our process. I mean, we knew what was going out, but... I went to eBay purist. If you've been on eBay a long time, you know exactly what I'm talking about. These folks, like, you know, I wrapped that package with love. Those people, I found four of those and just kept made them an offer. And when I got the first one on, I took the data and the information of how much money they were making. And, you know, to do this, you're going to have to have some structure. You're going to have to have a contract and they're going to have to shoot you a 1099 because their PayPal account's getting all the money. And there's a lot of trust involved. And, you know, if someone like screwed me and no one ever did, I was just not going to take them any more stuff. Because understand, I was getting this stuff from storage units. So I was getting this stuff for like not pennies on the dollars, but half a penny on the dollar. But that's how I found my people to outsource my eBay stuff. I found people that I knew to be great sellers and they weren't making a lot of money. So I gave them, a, I gave them an offer they couldn't refuse. The way my IKEA service virtual assembly ad just went live on Craigslist. Everyone else get in line behind me. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. You got to get started. You got to get started because you don't know what that ad will generate. I mean, you can meet your wife or you can meet the guy that's going to give you a lottery ticket. Uh, this is from Dom. Thanks for the Picasso web photo ideal. I use it a lot on my regular yard sales and they work. What do you think of the new Craigslist opportunity to post 24 pictures? Um, yeah, Craigslist is hamstring you for that because they, they they just you can forward a link from your ad to somewhere else like an album. But I, if you I would take advantage of it because their pictures are better. They're bigger. And since they won't let you do the uh, photo pimp anymore, just just go for it. anymore is the storage auction business still a good business to get into i know you get that a lot uh the real answer the real question is can you still make money yes and you're just going to work your ass off but yes you can still make money i would not get into the storage auction business today without a truck and a warehouse that's just me okay uh that looks like that's the end of the questions i think so while I have you here, I'm going to just put this up. Uh, you'll get this as an email because I'll just send this as a mass email to everybody in the morning or later on. And I'll send it out later on the night. But essentially, this is what's happening. This is going to become a tab in the Hustler Mindset Project, my, online, my private video channel. 
and it's going to have the recordings, the all everything that you see, plus a few enhanced things. Now, this is lifetime access because this is something that I'm going to keep going, doing and doing and doing. So right now, for the first week, it's one ninety nine, two hundred bucks, or you know twenty nine ninety nine per month. You know, pick your pause. But like like I said, once again, I will send out that email because. I get a lot of people that hit me up today like about the recorded versions and I got about like 20 of them and I was like okay there's a lot of folks like I ain't coming I'm just gonna wait for the recorded version and th this is what I think is fair and you can tell me if I'm wrong I'll be here every day for the next 20 the days tw yeah 28 more days after the day and I'm not holding back I'll answer any question I'll give you but you got to show up and if you can't show up then you got to pay I think that's fair but you know that's just me Let's see. I have about one half hour before sunset in New York City. I have enough sense to not approach a stranger for a hug in the evening. <laughs> yeah, that's a little different. Uh, I did. I did send. I will send out another one tonight. Uh, how about one third for three months? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, what I'm gonna do when I send out. You know what? I, I'm gonna yeah. I'll send I'll send out one tonight because the thing is, it's kind of hard to separate the list. And I will also send the link for tomorrow's webinar because, like I said, we'll be here again 4 p.m. until you know the blocks four to five. But like I said, I'm trying to keep them in like 45 minutes because I know you have stuff to do. I know, I know, right? I, know, I understand. Uh, Richard Cannon, what book would you recommend I read? Selling is Human by Daniel Pink. That's a good book. That's a real good book. Selling is Human by Daniel Pink. And with that, I'm going to end this session. I'll be back tomorrow. I will send out an email to everybody with all the information and stuff. So you can show up tomorrow at 4. And if you want to get the paid sessions, I'll get that set up too. All right. Once again, I want to thank everyone that came out. Uh, I really appreciate the turnout. And uh, I'll see you on the good side. The organizer has ended the session and this call will be disconnected.